Hello, my name is Sarah Maynard, and I'm a leader in Emmaus Road Anglican Church, which is a part of the Anglican Network of Canada. But also, in the last 20 years, I've been serving as a national prayer leader, both in evangelical and in charismatic circles. I've been asked to share a few thoughts on how the presence of God manifests in the sacraments. And I'm going to specifically focus on communion, because, of course, we get baptized once, but we have communion regularly. Let's begin by thinking about the presence of God. The presence of God, well, God is omnipresent. He is everywhere, but he is also more acutely or intensely present in certain times and at certain places. You might think, for example, of Solomon's temple when it was dedicated and how the priests couldn't even stand because of the intensity of the glory, the intensity of the presence of God. That's a beautiful example of God coming near. And he, that, that example is not just confined to the Old Testament, but it becomes a part of how the church experiences God today. The church, of course, is the temple of God. But I think it's important to begin with the idea of um, just even inquiring, how, what does Jesus say about this? And how does Jesus tell us his presence will manifest? Or perhaps, what are the practices that Jesus instructs us to do that will result in him drawing near? And while I have had personally uh, countless and varied experiences with the presence of God, both privately and in corporate settings, it's only been recently that I've looked to the scriptures and allowed them to guide my expectations and then listened to how the church throughout history has understood what, what they say about how we can encounter the presence of God. I think of a verse in John six fifty six where Jesus said, Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Of course, this is a direct reference to communion. And Jesus' word in this text uh, for abiding is the same word that he uses when he teaches us in John 15 to abide in the vine. It's a call to deep and intimate union with him, being in him. Boy, that sounds like an encounter with God. Paul also writes to the Corinthians and he says, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Here Paul, in his writing, is using this word participation. And that is the Greek word koinonia. Again, a term for intimate fellowship. There's something here that I wasn't aware of intimacy, encounter, and the glory of his manifest presence are all the same thing. It's God coming near in more intense and tangible ways, sometimes with peace, sometimes with power, other times with an overwhelming awareness of his love. Jesus meets us and communes with us at the table, at his table. Now, if you told me seven or eight years ago, um, that this would be how I would be seeing things, I would have said, oh no, the most intense place of his presence has to be worship. It's when we sing to him. That would have been my perspective. Yet, what I've experienced and what I continue to experience of God's glorious presence in the midst of musical worship, of sung praises and and adoration has in part been because I had faith that God would come near and meet me in those moments. It had been my expectation. And so I postured myself in alertness and expectation. I made space for his spirit by lingering, responding, honoring him when he moved. And when I began to realize that the scriptures teach that I would encounter him possibly in even greater ways through the sacraments, especially at the table, I began to apply faith. I likewise became expectant, alert, ready to linger, ready to respond. And Jesus has not disappointed. 
So I want to commend this uh, practice to you and encourage you to lean in and see how the Lord might encounter you. If you want to explore this idea a bit further, there's two books that I would recommend. One is called Spirit and Sacrament by Andrew Wilson, and it's published by Zondervan. And the second is Gordon Smith's book called Evangelical, Sacramental, and Pentecostal, and that's published by Ivy Academic. Thank you, and God bless you.